particular field looks pretty doggone good. Pickles. A few days they'll be in a jar. Peppers. That would be a traditional uh, banana pepper you oh, would you, yeah that you would get when you went to Subway. And peanuts. We got real high hopes on this particular variety. We think it's going to be a, a good one for us. Ninth generation farmer Charles Hardin carries on the family business with one exception. He no longer grows tobacco. Instead, he plants a variety of other crops. We're getting ready to start our clary sage crop. We're putting it in the grain as we speak. You heard right, clary sage, an herb that thrives in hot, dry weather. Well, it's been a good fit for us because it's cash flow guy. It comes off in June, and when it comes off in June, traditional crops don't come off in June much. So you get a, you get a constant ca cash flow. It helps. It helps 30 area farmers grow thousands of acres of this specialty crop around Mary Hill. An extract from the sage plant is critical for the fragrance industry. The powdery substance you see here gives your favorite perfume or cologne staying power. And there's a conveyor system that moves it up this long incline and drops it into the top of the, of the extract. In fact, Dr. David Peel claims more than 90% of the world's Claria ride supply comes from chopped sage extracted at his North Carolina processing plant. That's what it looks like. It's like mulch. What it looks like is mulch, yeah. Ironically, it was the golden leaf that brought this enormous extractor to this rural area. The plant started out in the 60s as a research facility for a tobacco company. Peel says the cigarette manufacturer, his former employer, built the facility as a place to experiment with flavorants for cigarettes. Well, it hadn't been for uh, R.J. Reynolds wanting to grow clary sage, no, we would have never had that big extractor we saw earlier. We wouldn't have had the expertise to be able to do that. And so that gave us the experience base to be able to brand into other products. Even today, Avoca Farms processing remains a secret to many North Carolinians. Well, it is a secret in that a lot of people that, that live in Bertie County have never driven down that road out there. Uh, but I can tell you that we're on the map of the world as far as people knowing that we're here. Nearly 80 people work at Avoca, making it the area's largest employer. This, uh, you know, looking back on it, was really a diamond that you find, you know, in a gravel pit, or it was for me. This facility has capability uh, just because of its location. Might not be, um, you know, out in the forefront or the spotlight, but it doesn't mean that um, our services are not as capable as west of 95 or somewhere with more notoriety. The company plans to nearly quadruple the acres of sage farmers grow and Avoca will process during the next season. And you start extracting it down and you end up with something that maybe. Along with extracting chemicals from plants, Avoca can add omega fatty acids to food products like baby formula. But surprisingly. We do not have a single North Carolina customer. Peel is confident that's about to change. North Carolina Biotechnology Center has been in existence for over 25 years now. And there's 525 biotechnology companies in the state of North Carolina who have all been doing research for 25 years. So it's about time now for things to be coming out of laboratories to be able to be commercialized. Avoca provides us with an expertise in extraction so that a company coming to the area can be insured through their years of work in extracting that the yield will be what they say it's going to be, even if you have a small amount of, of um, biomass that you're looking at initially. Having the land to grow the crops and then being able to extract chemicals from them is an important part of the county's economic equation. The area's promoter would like to see more extraction facilities. We'll never have the super um, labs that you're going to find, you know, at Centennial Campus or Wake Forest or um, scattered around, but we will be a quality partner in proving their technology. I think it's going to take some innovation and some ability and willingness to change. The kind of work that we got with a extrapolation plant like we got at Avoca, uh, you know, that's divvying into that type of thing is, is certainly an asset that could help us in the future as we look more towards that. Bertie County could use the boost. According to the last census, the population is dwindling and 26% of the county's residents live in poverty. We have pockets of prosperity, 
basically, though, the world has changed. We are no longer an agrarian uh, economy bundled around low-wage manufacturing and textiles and tobacco and agriculture. Agriculture now is 21st century. We got to have a different set of, 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 of skills, job skills, to bring in here. Uh, and, and there's going to be opportunity in that. You know, so we've got to get out here and get them educated. Uh, some's going to some's going to go on to be doctors and lawyers and Indian chiefs, but there's going to be plenty of work, I think, for kids that that that's got a good grasp of what we're doing and can come back to the farm and manage farms, and uh, and, and and the way we're going to be farming in the next 10 years. But some don't plan on waiting around that long. It's pretty tough, especially now, especially in small towns. There's not much to choose from, and for one thing. And a good paying job, you're gonna have to travel somewhere if you're willing to do that. If you gotta get a job, beggars can't be choosers. Specialized education and expanding broadband are critical for luring companies to the area and bringing the young people back, according to Steve Biggs, the county's economic developer. We're very fortunate too sometimes that um, people who have lived here um, want to come back here. The salesman in me says, you know, Come on down and try us and, you know, and look at us and, and see what we do have to offer because we do have a lot to offer. We've got the agriculture here. We've already got a, a fairly significant amount of industry here in terms of what they're doing over to Vogue and some other places. Then, you know, who knows the next Silicon Valley might be for T County. That is our goal, to make these niches in our rural area competitive with anywhere in the world.